Welcome to Math 28, Lagrange Optimization. In this section, you must be able to apply Lagrange method in solving optimization problems. There are two types of extrema problems. The first one is relative extrema of functions. In solving this, we have to find first the critical point or points and then use the second derivative test to determine if the function has a relative maximum or minimum at a specific critical point. The second one is constrained optimization. Here, we use the Lagrange method. Let's start first with a basic form of such problem. For now, we will consider a function of two variables and a single constraint. Suppose we are to optimize z equals f of xy subject to the constraint g of xy equals 0. The first step would be to form the function capital F of xy lambda equals f of xy plus lambda times g of xy. After this, we solve for the partial derivatives of capital F with respect to x, y, and lambda. Then, we set these partial derivatives to zero, which will form a system of equations. After solving the system of equations, we will be able to get critical point or points. To determine whether f has a maximum or a minimum value in a specific critical point, we compare the function values of f at those critical points. If in case there is only one critical point, we compare the function value at the critical point with another function value of f at any point that satisfies the constraint. That's it! Doable, right? Before proceeding, you may opt to pause this for a while and review the four steps in Lagrange optimization. Now, let's go to our first example. Determine the maximum or minimum of the function f of x, y equals x times y subject to the constraint x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 equals 1. In this example, it is obvious that it's f of x, y equals x times y that we are optimizing. As for the constraint, we want g of x, y to be equal to 0. So we have to subtract 1 from both sides of x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 equals 1. So g of x, y is equal to x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 minus 1. And is also equal to 0. Now we form the function capital F. Again, this is just equal to f of xy plus lambda times g of xy. So we have capital of f of xy lambda equals x times y plus lambda times the quantity x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 minus 1. From the function capital F, we now solve the following partial derivatives. The partial derivative of capital F with respect to x is equal to y plus lambda times x over 4. The partial derivative of capital F with respect to y is equal to x plus lambda y. As for the partial derivative of capital F with respect to lambda, we have x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 minus 1. Now, we solve the following resulting system of equations. The numbers on the right are for referencing the three equations only. Solving for x from the first equation will give a value of negative 4y over lambda, while solving it from the second equation will give a value of negative lambda y. From these two equations, we will have negative 4y over lambda equals negative lambda y. Multiplying both sides by lambda will give us lambda squared y minus 4y equals 0. Notice that we can factor out y. Since the product of y and lambda squared minus 4 is 0, then either y is equal to 0, or lambda equals 2, or lambda equals negative 2. Let's start with the first case. If y is equal to 0, then from equation 2, we have x equals 0. This contradicts equation 3. Hence, y is not equal to 0. For the second case, if lambda is equal to 2, 
Then from equation 1, we have x equals negative 2y. From equation 3, we have the quantity negative 2y squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 minus 1 equals 0. Simplifying this will give us 4y squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 equals 1. Further simplification will yield us y squared equals 1. Taking the square root of both sides will give us y equals 1 or y equals negative 1. Since x equals negative 2y, then x equals negative 2 or x equals 2. For the third case, if lambda is equal to negative 2, then from equation 1, we have x equals 2y. From equation 3, we have a quantity 2y squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 minus 1 equals 0. Simplifying this will give us 4y squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 equals 1. Further simplification will yield us y squared equals 1. Taking the square root of both sides will give us y equals 1 or y equals negative 1. Since x is equal to 2y, then x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. We can now form our four critical points, namely negative 2, 1 and 2, negative 1 from the second case and 2, 1 and negative 2, negative 1 from the third case. Next is to evaluate f of x, y at these points. f of negative 2, 1 is equal to negative 2. f of 2, negative 1 is equal to negative 2 f of 2, 1 is equal to 2, f of negative 2, negative 1 is equal to 2. In conclusion, f of x, y subject to x squared over 8 plus y squared over 2 equals 1 attains a maximum value of 2 at 2, 1 and negative 2, negative 1, while it attains a minimum value of negative 2 at negative 2, 1 and 2, negative 1. How are you so far? Were you able to follow each step? If not, feel free to go back before proceeding to our next example. Just remember to feel free to pause, rest, or take time to digest the lessons. Are you ready for our next example? Here it is. A manufacturing company produces television, X units of model A, and Y units of model B per week, with a cost function of F of x, y equals 6x squared plus 12y squared. If they have to produce a total of 90 televisions per week, how many of each type should be manufactured per week to minimize the cost? Before we even try to solve this, let's just take time to identify the function that we must minimize. Now try to identify the constraint. Are you done? What should we minimize? Obviously F. How about the constraint? Note that x plus y must be equal to 90. But then again, the constraint must be equal to 0. What should g of xy be? Yep. G of x, y must be equal to x plus y minus 90, which is equal to 0. Now, form the function capital F. Can you recall its form? It's small f plus lambda g. So capital F of x, y lambda is equal to 6x squared plus 12y squared plus lambda times the quantity x plus y minus 90. From the function capital F, we now solve the following partial derivatives. The partial derivative of capital F with respect to x is equal to 12x plus lambda. 
the partial derivative of capital F with respect to y is equal to 24y plus lambda. As for the partial derivative of capital F with respect to lambda, we have x plus y minus 90. Now, we solve the resulting system of equations. From equation 1, we have x equals negative lambda over 12. From equation 2, we have y equals negative lambda over 24. From equation 3, we have x plus y equals 90. By substituting the values of x and y, we will have negative lambda over 12 plus negative lambda over 24 is equal to 90. Multiplying both sides by 24 yields lambda equals negative 720. Going back to the value of x and y in terms of lambda, we have x equals 60 and y equals 30. In this case, there's only one critical point, and that is 60, 30. Since we only have one critical point, we can't conclude yet if f has a minimum value at 60, 30 subject to the constraint g equals 0. To determine if f has a maximum or a minimum at 60, 30, we compare the function value of f at 60, 30 with another function value of f at some other point that still satisfies the given constraint. Can you recall what these partial derivatives are for? We will be needing this for the second derivative test. Using the second derivative test, we have d of 6030 to be equal to the second degree partial derivative of f with respect to xx times the second degree partial derivative of f with respect to yy minus the square of the second degree partial derivative of f with respect to xy. This is equal to 288 which is greater than 0. Furthermore, the second degree partial derivative of f with respect to xx is equal to 12, which is also greater than 0. Hence, f has a minimum value at 60, 30. Now we can answer the previous question. To minimize the cost, the manufacturing company must produce 60 units of model A and 30 units of model B per week. Next, we compare the function value of f at 6030 with another function value of f at a point that satisfies the constraint. Can you still recall the given constraint? It's x plus y minus 90 equals 0. So we may consider the function values at 70, 20, 45, 45, or 6129. As you can see, f of 6030 is the least among them. Hence, f has a minimum value at 6030. Now, we can answer the previous question. To minimize the cost, the manufacturing company must produce 60 units of model A and 30 units of model B per week. As I said before, we focus on the most basic form of Lagrange optimization. That is, we only consider the function of two variables and only one constraint. The natural question now is how do we apply Lagrange optimization if the given function is a function of three variables? The good news is, it follows the pattern for the most basic form. Capital F is still F plus lambda g. However, due to the addition of variable, there is also an additional equation for the resulting system of equations. Still, you can do this. Another natural question that comes to mind is what if the number of constraints increase instead? Capital F will have an additional term, namely mu times the second constraint. Additionally, we have to consider the partial derivative of f with respect to mu. This in turn increases the number of equations in the system that you have to solve. 
that's it. I hope that you were able to understand this topic. If not, feel free to review it or to consider other references. Thank you! Hello, Math on the Invidure! To check out more lecture videos, click here! And to supplement your learning, don't forget to answer the exercises which you can find in the description box below. Enjoy and stay safe!